All right, ladies and gentlemen, happy Sunday to you and welcome to the first Dash Dev Team versus the World event. We've got just a fun showcase for you today to show off a few of the new uh, features that the Dash Dev Team has been trying to put into place over the last few months. Uh, I am Kip. I will be with you for race one here and then I will be racing in game three. I am joined by Bressingham, who will be with me for comms on game one, but he will be racing in game two. Bress, how are you? Hey, Kip. I'm good. Happy to be here for some uh, awesome multi troid action. These races, I've did a bit of practice with MM2, and they're very fast and fun and hectic and silly. So, uh, yeah, I'm really excited. Yeah, so just so everybody out there is familiar, um, We've got three races today, all of which are going to be 2v2. And um, technically, they all have different settings, but there are some rules that will coincide. For example, very briefly, all three races today, is they're, they're all going to go by the rules of uh, first team to finish. So not average time. Uh, both players on each team will have to be done for that team to get their finish time. Uh, but there's three different combinations of settings. This first one is Chozo item split, but they are on vanilla map. I want to say bosses are shuffled in this one, if I recall correctly. But this is Multitroid. It's something new um, that we've had some very helpful guys from the Multitroid product help us make it work with our randomizer. Uh, tell us a little bit about Multitroid, Bress. Yeah, so... Um... It's different from co-op in that you actually are going to share everything, including health, ammo, items. Um, so it's a lot of fun. So when uh, Prof gets this morph ball here, it's going to be sent uh, to his partner here instantly. And interestingly, I see both of them went down, uh, which is not what I expected to see. Uh, usually somebody will stay up and just wait by BT, uh, by Frizo, and just go in instantly um, but yeah they, they share everything so you can see a lot of wacky shenanigans like farming for the other runner during hell runs uh spamming ship refill during mother brain lots of good stuff that's right so multi-troid as breast pointed out uh they are sharing items they are sharing bosses completed they are sharing uh, energy and resources as well so, um, but there's a, we're having a slightly different rule set for this than in game two. Game two will also be multi-troid. Um, you'll have to forgive me. I am not, I've only done a, a few multi-troids, um, but I believe in this one, the runners have agreed to abandon the traditional multi-troid, you know, tournament racing rule set, and they are allowing uh, resets. So basically... For example, I think you can go down and kill Ridley, but if you save outside of Ridley, uh, you you know both you and your teammate will get credit for Ridley, then you can reset and kind of get out of there. So th I believe these settings right here are probably going to go relatively quickly. Yeah, so basically if you reset in Multitroid and your opponent doesn't, you get to keep everything. So it's essentially just a teleport uh, to a previous save. So uh, they're both using that to their advantage here. You saw... Ace just after getting some stuff down below, just teleport to the ship uh, and then check bomb Terizo. And you saw sort of the same thing with Kubo after they were done down uh, down below, just teleport to the ship and then gonna go right here. Right. And so these rules are gonna be, you know, played slightly different than game two. Game two will also be multi troid. Game three will not be multi troid. It'll just be co op. So, but it'll be the same rules in terms of both players have to finish. So in the co op, Everybody will be running the same seed, but you won't be sharing anything uh, other than information. But yeah, as we have it set up here, Kupo and Mass on the top, they are both on the Dash Dev team. Ace Zero and Professor School are on the bottom. They are, quote unquote, the world. I've already seen a few funny comments in the uh, in the chat about how I think everybody that we're <laughs> racing is technically from the United States. But I will give a quick shout out. Um, since this was just a you know quick one-day uh, multi-hour event uh, we reached out to some of the folks that we met in person at SG Live so I believe everybody represented here uh, raced each other and kind of hung out at SG Live but this is not the only Dash Dev team versus the world quote unquote that I, we plan to do we just kind of wanted to showcase a few of our new 
um, settings here. So I do want to give a shout out real quick to the Multitroid guys. I believe Osti Hobble and uh, Lerne, uh, you'll have to forgive me on the pr pronunciation, but uh, both of uh, them have helped us tremendously in helping us get this set up to work. And um, obviously Multitroid is really fun. Not only can you be use it for, uh, you know, randomizer, but there's also uh, like categories on our extension board for speedrunning, which uh, is fun. And on top of that, you don't just have to do two player, you can do three player. But, uh, but anyway, yeah, so that's what we're here for today. How, how does this race look to you so far, Bryce? Uh, pretty cool. So we're, um, we're showing off the Chozo item split here. So, um, uh, and this is what would be known as the Chozo Bozo reset. So it should be shuffle bosses and uh, Chozo. Uh, looks pretty good. Uh, it's, it's hard to follow everything, but see Kupo's down at X-ray here. Kupo doing Ooh, some... and there's a speed. I, I don't think uh, the top team is getting that speed at all. That's that gauntlet. Oh, that and that in particular, given that it's Multitroid and that you share items, that is huge. Yeah. And Kupo was just a little bit off on the last Debo's Debo there. Has to reset. No big deal. Oh yeah. Speaking of which, that is kind of like a new feature. Um, we had discussed this with numerous players for a while. I, it doesn't look like he's using that save, but we actually did add in a save. It might just be in the area seeds. I can't quite remember, but we have a save that we've put at like in the middle of Red Tower, which can kind of help if you want to try to do some of those early X-ray shenanigans. So I'll be interested to see uh, if we find a suit. Um, Varia, it, I think every practice seat I did with him too, we didn't find Varia. I can't remember. <laughs> but it's kind of easy to skip Varia, um, at least in area uh, randomizer, not as much with uh, vanilla, because you can just have someone sit around the farm while you're in the danger zones. That's also kind of neat because if you look at the item splits for Chozo, um, you would almost, like in a one-on-one -on -one context, you would almost never skip Varia in Chozo. Like, it's very rare yeah. for something like that to happen. But it's neat that you can pull that off in Multitroid. Yeah, we do see a gravity and uh, grapple lets uh, Kupo get to this X-ray. So I'll, I'll be really interested to see if we skip Varia. There's, uh, it's harder to do in vanilla map, but with having gravity already, that's a good start. So the runners are actually pretty even here, um, except for the speed. I forgot that's actually really, really big. But uh, in terms of location, they're all four of them in red tower here now. Yeah, probably. I would say that speed is uh even bigger of a deal in this multi-troid than it would be in like co-op for example um because in co-op you know it might be that maybe one of the runners gets it but the other one on your team doesn't have it but here uh the world team is going to have the speed booster basically the duration of the entire run um yep. so that's going to be very very helpful for them yeah it's almost like speed is twice as good with two people using it I have on many occasions gone on record to say that I believe that outside of the suits, it's the strongest item in the game in terms of racing impact. So, yeah, that's going to be uh, kind of an OP thing. But I guess, you know, we'll, we'll have to wait and see. We'll, you never know. And yes, I think someone asked earlier, there are some dash logos, uh, like speed booster dash logos on the sprites for most of the dash members. I think everybody's probably using it. Papa Schmo put something together for us. So shout out to him. For a little bit of marketing yeah, was, there. I thought I saw that on Mass's Morph Ball. There was a little speed booster on there. Alright, so... Uh, Kupo about to save, I think. 
and check this first boss. And we'll see what we get here. If to really, it is possible. Um, Mass would need to probably just go. Uh, I don't know. You want to be able to farm health during the fight and also have somewhere to get supers. So it's not looking too good without any good farm spot. But every other boss is really simple. Dragon is easy to kill in this uh, equipment. So you got a 3 out of 4 chance. Yeah, my settings for co-op, we're running vanilla bosses. I gotta tell you, it's been nice not to have the stress of <laughs> not knowing what the boss is gonna be. I like it. It's nice to have some variety. I, I like all the modes equally, I think. Yeah, I kind of have always felt like the power of each one is the fact that other ones exist, if that makes sense. You know, you kind of yeah. get like a different play style. So um, that's why I kind of like... I like tournaments where you're just running one kind of thing. I think those are great too, but I also like to occasionally do multi where you have to prepare for different possibilities. Yeah. Okay, yeah, and uh, the speed is going to change the routing here a lot. Mass doesn't want to hell run on this uh, health without the speed to just kind of put you up mountain for free. So I'm going to head up. Probably be forcing the radio. That's a good point. That's speed booster already uh, sort of impacting the game. I mean, maybe Varia's right here and then they can just go. Maybe it's a good thing. But uh, one thing about... Meridia is it is completely garbage in Chozo compared to normal. You have Shack Tool, which is bad, Plasma, which is extremely slow, and the boss, which the boss could also be Ridley, which means you just have a complete dud Meridia here for the Dash team. I'll kind of go ahead and mention, you know, for anybody out there in the audience, one thing that I've you know, we're, we're just doing this for fun. This is only going to be a few hours. Just kind of a for fun thing to showcase that we've got some of these settings. But I am actually... Uh, ooh, man, they were in danger on the bottom there. I, I'm a little interested in, in getting some perspective from people about how viable Multitroid would be for, like, a tournament. Um, and, like, which settings kind of work best for it or, or not. Because I think some settings might be a little more balanced than others as it interfaces with Multitroid. Uh, one thing I do know for sure is that if you have a multitroid tournament, like a randomizer tournament, uh, very likely that, you know, it's going to be much, much faster, like finish times than, than normal. Um, not that that's a good or a bad thing, but I do find it kind of fascinating. I would definitely enjoy a multitroid tournament. I'm kind of, so fun. yeah, I'm kind of thinking like, again, this is not right this second, but... Like, at some point, I kind of want to put together maybe like a small, maybe just for lack of a better word right now, like something like a Dash League, where we just, you know, we can do it however we want. But I was thinking maybe a fun thing to do would be to make it two-player and then include Multitroid, but also include co-op. Because I feel like both of those things, it's fun to play with your partner, but you have to game plan very differently for both. So it'd be kind of fun to have, like, different ways to play as a team. Sounds great. Okay. Did Mass go with Shack Tool? Like, I maybe don't they know. Set out of it and just went to Plasma. It's a really awkward jump into Shack Tool. You actually have to gravity jump to spring ball jump. Oh, a reserve at yeah. Plasma. That's unfortunate. I would also like to have multi-world capabilities with Dash. Um, I I don't think we currently have the ability to do that. Um, it is something I'm very interested in, um, but we I think we'd have to you know contact some people and kind of get some things set up and figure it out. But that that is something that is definitely on our radar. Yeah. 
Got Prof down here going to Shack Tool. Everybody's favorite location. I figured we would get through all three of these races without a Variette Shack Tool, but wouldn't it be funny if the very first one it happened? That would be very funny. And I was thinking that'd be a melee for Team Dash, but Prof is uh, gonna go ahead and get that before them. Oh, look at that spacer. So what? something uh, cool about Dash is that Spacer does not turn off Plasma. That's right. We added that in at some point. We also have a new feature that you're not really going to see today. Shout out to Sloters. Um, we have the ability to turn on a starter charge beam, but we now have the ability to where if you have that setting on, uh, you can actually unequip that starting charge beam if you prefer to not have it on um, instead of it being forced. So that way you can do some, you know, some of your more traditional speed run, early game strategies, etc. So, yeah, nice little thing. A actually, I will mention this very briefly, Bress. Um, I was kind of playing around with different settings as we started to implement them. I'm I'm convinced that a pretty good setting for a uh, 101 would actually be like Chozo. Even on vanilla map, like Boss is Shoveled, kind of like we did with League last year. But if you just turn on that starter charge beam, it actually makes a lot of the later decisions very interesting. Because you're not soft locked, but then you might still be very, very weak. And it might take a long time to kill like Ridley or Mother Brain. So I might toy around with that some more too. I definitely like starter charge more now that you can turn it off and not look like a fool in Terminator. <laughs> Because I do not know how to do that room without without uh, no charge. Seen a lot of safe scums already uh, from both teams. It's really interesting to uh, see the difference in strategies. Oh, there it is, a zero. Finding that various suit at Grapple, which reminder for those of you that might have just come in, this is these are Chozo item split. So that is the only major that was going to be in the Croc area, and it turned out to be totally worth. Pretty good item. Unfortunately, it looks like Prof is he'll 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 get it here in just a minute. This this uh, jump isn't too too terrible. There it is. I was gonna say he was trying to kill that pirate with speed booster. Ironically, one fun thing that has come from preparation for this is it has made me look at a few strats I normally like that wouldn't really come up as much for me one on one. And uh, doing that room with just speed booster was something I worked on this week because it actually came up in one of my practice seeds. So kind of neat. That's a good one to know. Alright, we got Ace heading down to Lower North Fair. Team World has both suits. High jump, speed. One boss down. Uh, meanwhile, Koopo's heading down to Croc to get that Faria. And actually is ahead on a boss currently. I think positionally, Team World is still ahead. But we'll see what happens here. Yeah, I would, I would say right now it seems like Team World uh, is in a pretty commanding lead right now. It, I think, you know, some kind of major thing would probably have to happen. Um, they just, you know, not only did they get that speed booster early, but they first ones to Beria is pretty powerful. Speaking of which, Bress, 
technically the world should i mean you guys are should be favored if we're going off of uh just like maybe tournament wins overall like combined for the teams technically you guys are favored in the races so uh does that put any extra how do you feel knowing that like you really need to win or else you're you're uh you're gonna be made fun of for for Girls losing pride. my pride will be <laughs> yeah it's, it's pretty nerve-wracking honestly I, I don't think i'd be able to ever play this game again if i lost a lot at stake today here folks <laughs> No, but this is a casual, fun race, and I, I don't think it's uh, possible that we could lose, but in a, an alternate reality where that is possible, it'd be okay. <laughs> <laughs> so it looks like Koopo is about to find that various suit, which I'm sure Mass will greatly appreciate. Um, I'm not super experienced with Multitroid Rando, so it's like, I guess, is Koopo going to be the one that just goes straight from Croc to to Lower Norfair, and then I guess maybe Mass will head up to Wreck Ship from here, and I guess maybe Dutorian? Is that what looks like to be the path for them? Yeah. Um, yeah, so Mass is going to go to Dragon. I don't know if they've got like a rotating save at the ship. Because that would be the fastest way to get to Torian. But, uh, yeah, Kubo's going to do Lower Norfair, Mass is going to do Dragon, and probably Torian, depending on who has a closer save. Well, since I didn't prepare for this, I didn't do multi Troid. Y'all are busting out all kinds of strats I wasn't aware of. This is pretty sick. Yeah, I'm, I'm not familiar really with the uh, save scum strats, but when you just think of it as like a teleport, definitely really powerful, uh, a lot of potential. It's kind of like Link to the Past a little bit, like, yeah, uh, maybe not identical, but in, just in terms of, you know, there's times where you can go get something done and then kind of move somewhere else. Ooh, Ice Beam. That is a nice find to complete the full beam combination. Team World, in this case, has a really, really nice uh, distribution of items here. Wow, so yeah, Ace teleporting to the ship is going to basically just walk right into Torian as soon as Prof has the last boss dead. That's awesome. Just straight from Ridley to the to Torgan. It's crazy. So it looks like we're gonna have a you know fairly low thirty uh for a finish time. That's really, really fun. Koopo getting in after the lava dive there, nicely done. Mass starting his fantoon engagement here. Except for uh, refill on the ship over and over for Ace. So, something that makes these really fast is you really don't care about your ammo. As long as you have enough to like get through Mother Rain's glass. And even then, you, it, you just need one of everything, really, because you can just refill at any time. Be pretty slow to do that, though. A uh, good point from Papa Shimo in chat. You got to be careful that Tori really uh, with uh, Mother Brain because Mother Brain is constantly checking your health to decide what to do. So you kind of need to manipulate the cutscene to start as quickly as possible. And uh, if you refill like during that, Mother Brain will just keep attacking. Yeah, I want to say on the extension board, I think there's a low percent 
I think the low percent category for this is like lower than um, 14% because of the ability, I think, to like continue to refill your, you know, your partner's energy. Like, I think you could even potentially pause or something like that during Rainbow or I can't remember exactly how it works, but, but yeah, that is a, a part where you, you have to be careful because of the interplay between the two characters. Yeah, I knew it was something interesting. I remember asking years ago about the possibility of maybe just putting like a regular low percent ice category on there, but then I realized like it'd still be kind of interesting, but the flip side is what makes low percent ice or any kind of low percent so fun and difficult is like the limited resources and basically like, you know, even in a low ice multi-troid, one of your partners would probably just be farming supers and you just kill Ridley in like 30 seconds. So it probably wouldn't be that fascinating. All right, we got a Ridley fight up here for Kupo, speaking of Ridley, and looks like Mass is checking an item over here. I bet he's looking for a power bomb because he obviously at this point doesn't know yet about the ice beam coming his way, but I think after this he's going to head to to Torian. And with full beam combo, we only have a short 20 shots for Mother Brain 2 here. Mass did tell me in their preparation that in almost every seed that they played, Kupo ended up being the one going to Torian. So I find it kind of funny that, that he's the one that's got to do it. He probably hasn't been practicing it this week. It's always what you don't prepare for that happens in a race. Exactly. We have, speaking of which, I, I do want to give one quick shout out. We have one dev team member that is not in this event, uh, Rumblemans, who is a former uh, multi-world partner of mine in a previous tournament. And... Uh, Cassidy was unable to practice last night, but I still wanted to practice some because, like, you know, how you do co-op is very different from one-on-one. -on -one. So I had Rumble come in and practice with me a little bit. Uh, so shout out to him, not only for being on the team, but for practice with me. And I'm glad he practiced with me because I made, like, two mega mistakes last night in practice that I'm glad that I figured out. So I'm going to try to avoid those today. Remember, as we said earlier, for all three of the races today, no matter what the settings are, our current rule set, just to kind of make it simple, is uh, first total team victory. So not only in Multitroid, but in the co-op later, uh, the, the team that wins will be the one that has both players finish the seed. And so um, Dash dev team, not too far behind, but a nice, you know, pretty comfortable victory relative to how, how Multitroid works for the world team, a good start. But we are going to try to get all four runners of each race as they finish to come in and uh, do some interview. I think Bress might have to step away a little early in a little bit uh, to get his stream started. But Bress, how you feeling about your next race here in a little bit? Uh, I'm excited. It's going to be fun. I had a lot of fun practicing uh, with MM2, so I'm excited to get to play around, have some fun. And you guys have been on teams before, uh, not only in terms of uh, like the most recent league season, but I believe, if I recall correctly, you guys had done some like actual official two-player stuff together before too, right? Um, I don't. I, I've done uh, the league with MM2 and Farfalu, and he's teamed with Farfalu and SMZ3. Ah, okay, gotcha. And there we go. I believe oh, that's the. Over. 
I think that's it. That I've never seen that one happen before. I did not even realize you could do that with this rule set. That's Wait. really funny. <laughs> it's just reset to the ship. That's amazing. Yep, that's okay. it. Ladies and gentlemen, get your GGs in the chat. We've got a victory for Team World right off the bat doing a great, fun combination of uh, different, you know, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Like safe scums or resets or whatever? Chaos. Multitroid no chaos. Sub 30 time. That's very nice. Good job, gentlemen. Multitroid is a lot of fun. Uh, anyone who hasn't tried it, you should grab your friend and try it. It's great. Yeah, Multitroid's fun. I would recommend not only checking it out in a uh, randomizer context, but get your friend, try one of the speedrun categories. Uh, it's pretty fun to, uh, like, don't get me wrong, if you wanted to go, like, watch the world record, you know, um, sort of routes for some of these you could and try to mimic them sometimes when i do stuff like this i like to not look at that stuff at first just to kind of like toy around to see if i can figure out what might would work so there's all kinds of fun ways you can play with multi-troid whether vanilla or rando and we are joined by two members of the world team ace and prof welcome in guys yo gg Y'all taught me something. I had no idea that you could avoid the escape in this. That was really fun. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was uh, that was a, a revelation we came to at some point yesterday. We were playing pretty straight up, and then we got a message from Mass that was like, "Hey, are we playing with or without rules?" And I was like, "Oh yeah, we should probably think about that." And uh, we we were like, "Wait a minute, you can reset from LN. Wait a minute, you can reset from all these bosses. This is completely ridiculous. How fast is this?" I was like, you don't even need to do the escape, do you? Can't you reset to the ship? And the reason that we learned that, and this is great, Kit, is that I was trying in one of our earlier practice seeds to get a bunch of extra items, and I made a bowling check, but I did it too late, and I got stuck behind the bomb block after Rainbow Bee came, so I had no power bombs to get back out. And I was like, oh, I'm soft lock, I can't get back to the ship. And Ace is like, well, why don't you just reset to the ship? Isn't that going to work? And I was like, I guess, but I don't know if we can't can or not. I reset to the ship, I loaded on the ship, and then steam started coming everywhere out. So we were like, okay, we can use this. This is great. The power <laughs> of experimentation. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but it was fun. Like, I'll be honest with you guys, since I my, my race isn't multi-troid and I've only done a few of these, like in the randomizer context, like there was a lot of creativity going on that I was not aware that you could do or, or thought would be fast. Like it was really cool to watch y'all go through that. So just tell me a little bit about, you know, did you guys have fun kind of messing around with something different this week as you prepared? Chase, yeah, do you want to take this we one? We definitely had a ton of fun. I mean, like we went into it, I had never done multi trade at all. And like Prof and I haven't teamed together on anything. So we had no idea like how it was going to play out. And the first, the first thing we did took like almost an hour and a half. We had some disasters, like a death and we didn't know how it worked. Like. You know, when somebody dies and we reload, we didn't know like who reloaded first mattered, and like so there was a lot of a lot of a lot of rough patches, but it was still super fun to like figure out over a couple seeds, you know, what we can do, how to split things up, like how how things time out in the world. So it was it was really interesting to do something different like that uh, for sure. Yeah, and I, w I will say from a strategy standpoint, we sort of decided from the very beginning um, that. Uh, I was a little bit more comfortable with uh, certain parts of the game in Randomizer, like early X-Ray, for example. We felt that I was maybe a little stronger with that. Um, and so it, we decided that any sort of meme route, I would go down and come up around to do uh, early X-Ray, and, and uh, Ace would do the opposite. And then this seed, where we obviously didn't have that option for meme route, we decided essentially to have me follow behind. He could reset to the ship and then uh, I could essentially check uh, 230 and then do the same kind of loop where I check Gauntlet and then go to, to Alpha PBs. And then from there, it just flows where Ace is almost always gonna be the person getting down to LN first, and then I'm gonna be clearing uh, items in some order, depending on what we need um, between uh, Meridia and Wreckship. And in this case, because there was a pretty good chance, uh, we felt that Ridley might still be vanilla, uh, which it turned out to be. And even though we had Screw and Plasma, we felt not great about me sitting around just farming while Ace uh, 
uh, tried to finish off Ridley Suitless, so we just decided to go on a, on a hunt for Varia, which was also part of the game plan there. So it was a little slower, but we, we felt like it paid off to be a little safer here. Very nice. And we have a finish time for the Dash Dev team in race number one, GG to Mass Hysteria and Kupo. Hopefully GG's. they will uh, join us here in a minute. Yeah, you know, I was telling Bress earlier that um, for this showcase, first of all, I want to thank both of y'all for being willing to, to do this, especially considering that you might not have had any multi-troid experience before now but um you know multi-troid is really interesting but i also feel like there's some potential for it to interface with different item splits like mm -hmm. strategically differently so even though chozo is considered kind of one of the more if you will sort of faster um you know 1v1 item splits i, th I think it offers up some interesting stuff for how y'all approached it with two players that might be different than if we played like a major minor or something like that mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, so, I mean, we we, we tried to take rough. specific we tried to take specific advantage of the fact that this was Chozo, that this was fast, and that skipping checks is probably a little bit less valued in this mode than in other modes. And so that's why, like you saw in this race, we were a little bit more completionist with regards to making the commitment to go to to, to Croc and some of the far far away uh, Meridia checks. Very nice. So we are joined by Mass and Kupo, uh, our two dev team members uh, in race number one. GG guys. Hey, thanks. GG Prof. GG Ace. GG y'all. GG's. So real quick, I did not know this until this race. Kupo Mass, were you guys aware that you can finish the game without doing the escape? Because I just watched Ace and Prof do it. I I had not thought about that. So if you reset, <laughs> you can if one person finishes, you can reset. That's funny. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah so I touch down on the ship and then Ace just resets as soon as the counter starts and then uses uh the, the first save that, that they had to go right under the ship and I don't know, it was like a you know, two fifty two finish or something silly like that. <laughs> yeah, it's a little weird because you have to like move off the ship and then press down to go back in it because you'll come out and just stand there otherwise. <laughs> That's great. That's next level. Like, yeah, if I think so, that's what when we were practicing this, we were having a blast. We were like, this is so crazy. And it's like, there's probably tons of like strats and, and exploration that could happen that just because you just don't see this kind of shenanigans a lot, you know? Let me, while you guys are here, I also want to, I'm not sure if Bress is still here. I know at some point in the near future, he's going to have to step away to do his race, but I wanted to thank him for doing comms on this race. Um, but I do want to ask Mass and, and Kupo, not only about the race here, but just you guys know a lot more about all of the technical parts of all of everything because y'all are the ones doing, you know, the majority of the work on a lot of this stuff, uh, especially like both of y'all and Cassidy. So can you guys, while you're here, just talk a little bit, not only about prepping for this, but also just like some of the work that's gone into to getting this together? Yeah, absolutely. Kupo, you want to? uh maybe, maybe we don't have them yeah it yeah, looks like so, he's not lighting up yet okay yeah so no so you know as far as like the work to get all of this like there's a couple different things involved like obviously we you know when we did sg live we all kind of talked with everybody and like the consensus was that like chozo is just such a fun uh mode so that was sort of like a priority um i was like okay let's let's see what we can do to make sure we get all that set up and so that you know not too bad like a little uh creativity on the way that our specific C generation logic works. And so, so we sort of got that knocked out over the holidays and had kind of a good time with that. But then, you know, the multi-world thing just kind of came about, like, I can't even remember who suggested it. Maybe like Pops and Koopo were messing around with it or something. And um, the, the, the gang over there, um, Austi and uh, Lerner, like, Lerner, Le I, I can never pronounce it right, but like, they do some really cool stuff and so we were looking at it and we just you know we did a little test like how well would dash work if we pick like item randomizer or varia or whatever on their thing and it was pretty close so we we reached out to them and said hey you know we'd be interested in maybe doing whatever kind of tweaks are necessary to get dash working and i mean they were super awesome like they got right back to us and said yeah all right well let's set it up like you know you know the uh, me and Koopo and Cassidy were all in there in their chat just kind of saying, hey, well, you know, this is a slightly different thing that we do. And, oh, they're like, hey, you guys got some new items too, right? And so we didn't get to see that on this one. But, but yeah, so, I mean, it was really just a lot of back and forth. And then, 
anybody that's watching on the Dash site, like, Koopo just kind of went off and said, like, I'm going to build a whole way that we could do this whole thing like an event, and uh, hopefully we'll eventually be able to launch VODs and things like that. So uh, it was, yeah, it, it all just kind of came together. And it was pretty fun. Excellent. And I think Koopo's having a little bit of technical issue. Koopo, are you with us yet? Not sure what's going on with Kupo. He, he appears to be online, but for some reason, uh, Discord isn't picking up his mic. Uh, we'll give him a second to keep working on it and see if we can get him in. But uh, anyway, Ace, Prof, before we kind of get set up for the second race here, any final comments you guys would like to make about uh, your race? Uh, I won't make a comment about the race, but I just wanted to say thank you to uh, to Kupo and Mass, our competitors here. Uh, it was it was a lot of fun. Honestly, we, we had a blast prepping for this. Ace and I did. I really prefer uh, racing with Ace than against. We had a, quite a grueling three game set at SG Live this year, and it was a lot more fun to just be in the booth together, uh, grinding stuff out together rather than, uh, than than fighting against each other. And thanks to Kip, you and the whole Dash Dev team. This is uh, honestly, I think this is a blast. It's very accessible. The website's great. For folks that are looking to get into rando i really think that this is the way to do it um and uh yeah thank you so much thank you prof ace yeah i'll just echo pretty much the same thing it's, it's a lot of fun a lot of fun doing the races and, and you know in voice chat just kind of hanging out with with prof over the last week or so while we prepared but it's also really cool just to see you know the dash constantly being updated and having new things added like it, it's cool to see how that that all comes together and even if something doesn't end up being your taste, like I, I don't know that this is going to catch on as the the hot new way to race exactly what we did, but it was really fun and it's cool that that option's available to mess around with and, and tweak either with the rule set that we had or you know the more traditional rule set that's used for multi droid races typically, uh, or even just seeing how Chozo works with area because I haven't I haven't done any of the, the dash Chozo with the area randomization, so I'm interested to see the other races. But thanks for putting all this together behind the scenes, both the dev side and like the event here to showcase it. Yeah. And again, thank you all for being willing to uh, help us out and, and, you know, give your time and participate. But I agree with you, Ace. I kind of talked about that a little bit during your race. Um, I, I'm always kind of like a wait and see kind of person, right? I, I don't know for sure if multi-troid um, randomizer is like, depending on the settings, I'm not sure exactly how the sort of, strategies would develop and, and how quote-unquote balanced it might be for racing but even if it ends up not being specifically in a tournament it's still fun to just have that option for people to mess around with um which is you know kind of what we're trying to showcase today but uh kupo are you there hey okay we now have kupo i'll turn it over to kupo for some final words here yeah i just wanted to say this is a lot of fun i think internally you know when mass and i were practicing we were under the impressions since we've never run a multi troy tournament before that there were no rules and then once we started doing all the saves coming we're like maybe we should mention this in case this is not normal uh <laughs> which we found out then there were rules so i mean whether this works out being good or not i mean i'm of the mindset of let's just try it instead of theorizing for hours about it let's just like let's just run a few and then like let's see what kind of race experiences that leads to and whether i don't know how this is to watch i imagine confusing but this is super fun to play so i had a blast doing it good well i appreciate you uh not only racing today but obviously i mentioned earlier you know you and mass uh have done a ton of work in setting not only you know these new settings up but all kinds of other stuff with our website and whatnot so um, and Kupo, I believe, will be on comms in the next race. Is that right? Yeah, uh, 15 minutes with D Webb doing comms for. Uh, I actually forget who's running. So, our next matchup for the Dash Dev team will consist of uh, Derp and Papa Schmo. And they will be facing Co op Powerhouse Team, Mega Man 2, and Brestingham. Uh, so everybody, we're going to take a quick break to get that set up and we'll be back in just a few minutes. Uh, so thank y'all for watching and race two will be here and, and, you know, momentarily.